The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. It's Q101. Welcome back from the weekend. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. It is 31 degrees, 604, and it's not raining. It's not really foggy. There's no snow or ice. It's it's a it's a pretty good day. It's spring. It's spring. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's gonna be like in the 40s all week. It's pretty nice for February I, going into it. I'm excited because uh, now I can take my Christmas decorations down. <laughs> Yeah, would you get in trouble over the weekend for having Christmas decorations still up? Yeah, the association's like mad at us, but the snow, like in the burbs, like out here in Elgin, like it's been so high, like I can't, I can't reach my Christmas decorations. I, listen, I think it would have been unfair to say a pregnant lady go out and the ice and the snow for the last two to three weeks and below zero temperature to take down the Christmas lights. It's like, it's so ridiculous. And I can't, like, what's funny is, so I have, like, a Rudolph where his nose lights up. Aww. And you can't see him, but I can just see a blinking light under the snow. <laughs> That's all I can say. And I'm like, I can't get to this guy. Oh, wait, you still had it plugged in, so the lights were still on? The lights are still on. Because that- we can't get to the, we can't get to the, um. The plug? The, 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 you can't, it's covered. <laughs> Because it's behind, like, all the stuff. We have like, this big tree set up. Yeah. We couldn't get to it. So did they call you and say, excuse me? No, they me. sent a letter. Oh, God. What a waste of paper. Like, well, you live down the street. And also, if you're going to enforce rules and be an a-hole, at least do it face-to-face and be a man or a woman. And come be, in there and do it right. Be a woman yeah. about it. Be, be, is it a man or a woman that runs the HOA? I, I don't know who sent the letter because they just sign it like HOA. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Wussies. There's not, a, there's not even a person. Put your name on it. Put yeah. your name on it if you're going to do that. Right. Because, like, they still want to get invited to neighborhood stuff. So, but I'm like, what? First off, there are people in this neighborhood. We're not the only ones that still have, like, lights going. But things are actually, like, frozen and blocked off. Like, you can't reach it. So Mm. now, like, this week is definitely going to be the week because it's like, okay, cool. Things melted, but it was was not good. You don't have the letter handy, do you? Is it on your phone or anything? No, it's downstairs. Oh, (laughs) maybe throughout the show, somewhere in the show, if you get a chance to go run down and... and, uh, have your husband send it to you, the, the picture of it or whatever. Oh, just my to, God. <laughs> oh, my God. I'd love to know how they, you know, it's, it's got to be really passive aggressive is my guess. Hey, you know, we appreciated how you lit up the neighborhood with all the work you did to make your home and the neighborhood look much better. However, it is January 29th. And, and per our rules, because we have nothing else to do. Yeah. <laughs> They've come up with rules. Oh. I'm like. But the funny thing is, like, how do you know they're Christmas decorations? You can't see them. How do you know it's under there? <laughs> well, could they be Valentine's decorations? That's what I mean, because I have candy canes <laughs> that ran up my driveway, and they were red. And all, you cannot see a single one of them. All you see is a red glow. Yeah. So how do you know their hearts? How do you know? <laughs> That's, you should sell that to them, back to them, and then make them feel bad. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> I, think, I think you should. <laughs> Uh, 312-591-8300. Give us that proof of life check-in here at 607. This morning, big day with GTFO. It continues. We've done Blink-182. We have done... Wait, why am I drawing a blank on last week? What was last week, Case? Who was last week, Brian? Oh, my God. I my... know. Wait, 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 wait. I know Kinsey knows, I know. Brian. Wait, Who was it? Wait, wait, wait. Don't do it. Was it Blink-182? And then it was Fallout Boy. Okay, there you go. Fallout Boy in Los Angeles. And Blink was in Miami. Today, it's Foo Fighters in San Diego, baby. San Diego. Oh, (laughs) so that'll be at 7 a.m. and at 9 a.m. Make sure that's in your phone right now. Your chance to get a free trip to San Diego. Foo Fighters, who put on, as far as I'm concerned, their best performance ever at Riot Fest last year. They are certainly, certainly in the zone, and you could be there in a great warm place. They finally figured it out, you know, (laughs) according to Brian's review. 27 years late. Listen, I have seen them in the Metro. I have seen them in yeah, Tinley Park, like outdoor venue, and then seeing them at Riot Fest on the grounds there. You don't necessarily expect it all because you had Turnstile right before them on the stage next door. Can they top Turnstile? Well, I'm not saying they topped them, but they certainly kept that energy going just perfect, and it was a good, like, three hours of awesomeness. No, go ahead, Brian. Who did you think didn't perform well at Riot Fest? <laughs> the 
Let's see. <laughs> I who didn't who didn't do well? <laughs> what stage were we walking by when we went and got that funnel cake ice cream sundae? I I said I was like, this is Lincoln Park. They're doing Lincoln Park. <laughs> they were playing covers. <laughs> they were. Don't you remember? I do. I do. I can't remember what the band I was. Think, I think Hawthorne Heights was walking out to a Lincoln Park song, and Kinsey goes, "Are they just playing Lincoln Park?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is great. I love this stage. Yeah, that's great. This will stay at this stage all day. <laughs> Um, so, Foo Fighters 7 and 9, your chance to get a trip from Brian and Kenzie here on Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Before we get to the fact here, let's, let's a little shout out here. Kelly checked in from 219. And, you know, Kenzie's due date is a week from today for her baby. And she sent us a picture of her daughter. It said, delivered early, Claire Oliver, 12624. See that picture on the text line there, Kenzie? I know. Little baby. How cute. Yes, congrats, Kelly. That's amazing. Uh, how, also, how'd you get that baby out? Because, um, what do you mean? It came early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kenzie's been trying to work on this early <gasps> thing. She told me when she first talked to her this morning is that she's walking up stairs sideways. <laughs> and, and down. Da- and down. Because <laughs> she read that that like, it might help juggle the situation there. <laughs> let's, let's go. It's go time, baby. Yeah. Kenzie, I feel, like, I feel like the office kind of has this covered because they have the episode where they're trying to make Pam not go into labor, and they mm. run through all of the different things that she can do to essentially reduce labor just do the opposite of those order order like ghost pepper wings that baby will come oh, right out i've been eating you you guys yes have no idea <laughs> i've been eating dates i've been drinking raspberry leaf tea i basically replaced water with raspberry leaf tea it's What's the up only with the thing tea? i drink that it's supposed to like get things pump a lump in <laughs> is what it's supposed to do the i ba- don't know does the baby go like oh it's tea. <laughs> <laughs> i gotta get out of here i gotta get out of here <laughs> <laughs> I have made things way too good for him. I cook great meals. Like, I'm not leaving. I heard it's milk after this. Are you waterboarding the baby with raspberry tea? Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. Get so, me out of here. Dates, raspberry leaf tea, walking up and down the stairs, sideways, sitting on, like, like you're supposed to sit and, like, bounce on those stupid, like, like exercise balls. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Megan got That's one of those. supposed to do it. Oh, my God. I'm doing everything I can. I am trying so hard. Spicy food, of course. Like, I don't know what else to do. Mm. Just just come down to our hood. I, I know, you know, you're at the studio, but, you know, don't go to Elgin after work. Go to Brian and I's hood. Go to Bada Bing Wings. Get a nice order of hot wings. That baby, you'll you'll have that baby in Uptown. Oh, hell yeah. On the street. Because uh, of Bada Bing Wings? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They pack a they have a pregnancy wing, a labor, <laughs> a labor and delivery wing. That'd be a brilliant. If we were in a ring, a wing business, uh, just, right? a, just a sidebar on Bada Bing wings. They have like kind of like the fat head version of Tony Soprano and Polly Walnuts out front. I can't believe that hasn't been taken down. And like the people at HBO don't know they're like <laughs> stealing the intellectual property. That's true because it is in downtown Chicago and not like oh yeah. Nebraska. It's tucked on the corner, I believe, is Clark and Lawrence. Is that where Bada Bing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I so, walked by it last night. And I'm not trying to call them out because the owner is awesome and the wings are incredible. So let's let's keep that a little secret of Chicago there and not tell HBO that he's putting up Tony Soprano out front. <laughs> All right, facts to make your brain just go. Uh, what do they do? They go like that. Kind of like drinking raspberry tea and waterboarding a baby to get him out of your body. Um, Why the, do you got to say it like that? Out of your body. <laughs> Please don't talk about my body like that. <laughs> I don't like it. Okay, here it is. Uh, the number one reason people go to uh, their favorite restaurant, and it's not the food. We'll tell you what that is coming up in seconds. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew On Q101 Less than a half hour away from 7am And that's your first chance at Foo Fighters in San Diego With Brian and Kenzie on Q101 and GTFO Now a fact that makes your brain go boom So how people choose their favorite restaurant Has nothing to do with the food Okay, maybe a little bit to do with the food. You got to at least like that part. But, I would think. <laughs> but a poll of people that go to their favorite restaurants, a 1,000 American consumers in Chicago and a 1,000 small business owners in Chicago and hospitality workers found that when it comes to restaurants, cleanliness ranks higher than importance of the menu option and affordability. So almost 50% of people say that cleanliness is more important than anything else when going to a restaurant. And I find that kind of shocking because... Well- Ah, that's, it's hard to say. It's like, 
Is that what's gonna get me to go to a restaurant? Like this place was clean as hell. They swiffered. I'm coming back. Right, but if it's if it's super dirty, I suppose I would be like, I can't come back because it was gross. I guess. Yeah, I, I mean, I look at it like this. There was a place on Rush Street back in the day called Gino's Pizza, and that was not Gino's East. It was Gino's on Rush, and I swear they would get shut down by the health department. Every six months or so with either rats or roaches, but they had the best Sicilian pizza in the city, mark my words. And I would go there and get the pizza and then they would get shut down. And the day they reopened after getting shut down, I'd be the first one in line to get pizza again. And they get shut and down. And the again. only. <laughs> and they get shut down again, like six months later. Like I knew it was a repetitive thing. It wasn't like they cleaned up and it's all good now. Had, did you ever see a rat or a roach when you were there? Didn't. No, with I'm, that, okay, so if you were there and a rat ran across the floor, would you have been like, I can't come back anymore? Or would you have been like, excuse me, sir, I'm just going to pick up my pizza? <laughs> Penzi, this Sicilian pizza was so good. If I, <laughs> if I saw a rat run across the floor, I'd figure, oh, that was an anomaly. I got to eat know this what? pizza. I'm talking to the wrong person because didn't you have a rat run across your floor in your apartment? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I had a rat run across my apartment and... I still stayed there. He probably there. came from Gino. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he probably followed you home. <laughs> he was in the mozzarella sticks box. And he just yeah, got, <laughs> good lord. I don't know. The food was so good, and I figured, I, I sold it to myself in my head that, well, every restaurant probably has rats and roaches, so these just guys I would just, say that's incorrect. <laughs> these guys just didn't pay off the government from coming by and expe- inspecting them, so they got well, busted. I'm with you, Brian. It, Thanks, bud. I think that logic actually holds up. Like, I'm a big believer... <laughs> that fast food restaurants are way cleaner than fine dining because you think about the scrutiny that fast food is under. They have to make sure their restaurants are actually in tip-top condition. But if you go to like a Michelin star restaurant and maybe everything isn't on the up and up, I'm sure people look the other way because uh, there's an image that is there to protect. Yeah. I will say, I will say when it comes to the fast food, think about like not a lot of reusing going on, right? Yeah, it's do. all wrapped up. It's all in paper. Utensils are wrapped up. Where if you go to a like a regular regular restaurant, you're reusing plates, silverware. This, so maybe there is less of an opportunity for spread. You know, like it gets into a case's theory. Uh, it feels like a good reason to eat a lot of fast food. <laughs> it's so healthy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good for you. I'm, when you well, think I'm doing about this it. for my. I'm doing this for my safety. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they have protocol, I guess. I think, by the way, I looked up Geno's on Rush. I think they were open up until last year, but they, uh, they've, I think they've closed for good. And they have, you know, a high One st- mega rat just showed up. I don't know. They have, a, they have open up four and five stars, thousands of reviews, so people agreed. And I just figured it was just the cost of doing business for me to get that delicious pizza. That's all I'm going to say. I just love that your theory is, I'm sure all restaurants have rats and roaches. I think... I, I, It's hard. You got all that good food out there, and rats and roaches love good food. They're hungry. They're hungry little critters. Yeah. We're the number one in in America with rats. We're the number one with roaches. We're number one with bed bugs. And number one with good food. Hell yeah. It's a match made in heaven. Could you imagine going back there and seeing a a little rat spinning a pizza? (laughs) (laughs) I love that movie. It's Ratatouille, and it's great. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q. 101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. So we like to talk to you on Mondays at this time and say, hey, how was your weekend? Give us a highlight of your weekend, something cool that happened. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. Hey. For example, Kelly said, what was that, Friday, where a baby came early. Uh, and that was so pretty and so beautiful, uh, this picture I she sent in. Oh, so uh, cute. Claire Olivia on 126, the baby came early. That's wonderful. I wonder. You have one, Brian? Was that? Oh, from the weekend? Yeah, here's here's the thing. And this is going to sound, well, let me just say this. It was kind of my birthday weekend, and the situation my wife having to go to the emergency room on Thursday kind of took a, put a damper on my birthday, actual day. The audacity. She's, She's really selfish. Is what you're saying. I know. She just, everything's about her. Thank you guys for understanding and taking <laughs> my side on this one. <laughs> so, oh, my God. But the thing is, she, even though she was, you know, kind of recovering, even though she felt fine, she felt guilty and bad and frustrated. So we had some good food this weekend. Friday had Pequods. Saturday had El Tapatio, my favorite Mexican place on the north side. It is the best. And then Sunday, City Barbecue, which I know is a chain place, but my brother bought it down from Deerfield for the Lions 49ers game. City Barbecue is on point. Never had it before. There might be a location near you. Check it out. So I'm curious about the weigh-in's going to be today at 8 o'clock after three of that. But the real hound of the weekend, 
It's on Sunday morning. On the weekends, Harper, my 15-month-old daughter, wakes up, and I take care of her no matter what time she wakes up because Megan has to do it during the week every day working from home. And she woke up at 5, of all things, on Sunday. would not go back to bed, and I go, I got it, rolling out of bed. All the women in your life are so evil to you. That's right. right. That's right. Again, thanks for having my back, guys. It's good to have friends. (laughs) (laughs) And... Megan said, no, I got it. I go, no, 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 no. You were in the emergency room Thursday. I got this. She goes, no, you lay back. Happy birthday. So I rolled back in the bed and slept till 8.50. And I got to say, this sleep thing is underrated. I don't know what's going on. I woke up and felt like I drank three Red Bulls. It was so incredible to pop out of bed and go, let's attack the day. Let's go do things. After getting that extra amount of sleep, because I haven't had that since Harper was born, like, you know, getting close to a year and a half ago, of getting sleep. It's it's amazing sleep. What time did you go to bed the night before? We actually crashed out early because Megan was a little tired from the stuff that's going on. We went out to dinner, so we were in bed before she 10 o'clock. She was exhausted from stealing your thunder. Right, exactly. Thank- <laughs> God, you get me. It's so good. <laughs> But so we, I got about 11 hours of sleep. Good for you. 11 hours. I haven't gotten that in a year and a half. And it was great. I got to tell you, I'm still like reveling in it. I just, I can't stop thinking about how great it was to just roll over and then go, you know what? She's got it. I'm rolling over again. And I'm rolling over again. And finally I go, ooh, ooh, let's get out of bed here, I guess. And let's go. And then you took your nightcap off and blew out your candles that you used to light the hallway <laughs> in the middle of the night. I, imagine I was that's just going to say, next. Brian yes. should have been born in like the 1950s. Uh. Was like, he's like, I love this whole hands off with my child thing. Yeah. This is incredible. Oh, it would have been great. <laughs> Brian watches Mad Men. He goes, Don Draper was right about a lot of things. Oh, he hell yeah. Was. God dang. Would have been cool to have been born back then. <laughs> oh, my God. It was amazing. I really got to say. Uh, for people out there that are ignoring sleep, hey, try it. It's pretty good. You can't make up sleep. No. Stop. Like, start ignoring your children and stop ignoring sleep. That's Brian's, that's Brian's weekend takeaway. That's take right. Away. That's what you should do. I, I, I see Kenzie designing a new shirt for Christmas this year. It oh, says yeah. just that. Ignore you. F them kids. <laughs> Here he is. <laughs> It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. What's the highlight of your weekend? Check in at 312-591-591. 8,300. Gil Curtis coming with your headlines and 15 minutes away from your chance at the Foo Fighters in San Diego. GTFO. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. 10 minutes away from your first chance at Foo Fighters in San Diego. GTFO. 7 a.m. And at 8.50 today, we're going to call the winner of last week, Fall Out Boy in Los Angeles. Announced that winner. A lot of people texting in, I qualified. How am I going to find out? Well, we will call you and get you on the air at 8.50. So focus on 7 if you haven't qualified or got anything done for Foo Fighters in San Diego. And then uh, also then 8.50 to win. Now, people checking in with their highlights of their weekend. Uh, let's see. Checking in. I took too many edibles before my neighbor's kid's fifth birthday party, LOL. No name attached to that one. Uh, <laughs> I can only imagine what, how, what happened there. Uh, Derek checked in from Woodridge, said, My highlight of the weekend is Uber at a promotion, so I got a disgusting amount of Taco Bell, and we ate as much as I could till I fell asleep. That's a, that's a great uh-huh. weekend. That's a great weekend. I love that. Do you have a highlight, Kenzie, at all of the weekend? Um, so this weekend I did my last event until after baby. So um, Pads of Elgin is a really, uh, it helps with the homeless out here in the Elgin community. Uh, and it, it's really amazing what they've done for people. They had a lot of people come up and speak who lost everything because of like health issues. So oh like, they're, like, like they were, they're so successful. And then a huge crippling health issue entered their life where they couldn't work. And then, you know, they lived off their savings for maybe six months to a year. And then all of a sudden, you know, that's gone, right? Yeah. And so I mean, it's a really a, an amazing charity. And we're part of it every year. Last year, we, it's a, like a dance competition. It's like the Dancing with the Stars one. So last year we danced in it. This year my husband and I hosted it. So we always going to be involved. And I was nervous. Like they asked me to host and I go, I would love to do it. But I may not make it. Like, I have to put that disclaimer out there because <laughs> uh, I don't know when this when this baby comes. So I was really, really nervous to 
you know, go to the event. And like, I, I didn't want to be embarrassed and it happened like right in the middle. Like I didn't want my water to break on the dance floor for the competitors or no. something. So I was so nervous. So I felt very relieved kind of getting that off my checklist, so to speak. I love being part of the event because it's so special, but also yeah, like not ruining their event by being like, I'm so sorry I went into labor and now I can't come. So I felt so much relief when we were walking out of the event. Like we did it. I didn't ruin anything. I didn't miss it. And like, it was awesome to be part of. And I'm like, that is it. I am done with the full blown events until after this baby shows up. Listen, I beg to differ. Your water breaking and the dancers having to compete with that, or at least a new part of the dance routine had to deal with your water on the floor. I think that that would have made the event much more memorable. Oh, do you? Yeah. That must be nice. <laughs> Very fun. That's awesome. That's amazing. You did that. I'm glad it went okay. Um, yeah. Casey, got anything highlight of the weekend at all? Yeah, yeah. I had a good, you know, I had a good weekend at TV, which is always nice. Girlfriend and I are both normally pretty busy on the weekends. We weren't this weekend. So we watched the finale of Hell's Kitchen on Ooh, Friday. I love oh, that yeah. Phenomenal season. Congratulations to the winner. I won't give any spoilers, but I was very happy with the result. We really enjoyed this season of Hell's Kitchen. And we were sort of still in a, a kitchen mood after we had finished that season. And we looked at each other and we said, let's rip the Band-Aid off. Let's finally watch The Bear. And we watched all but two episodes of The Bear this weekend and could not have enjoyed it more. I know I'm late. I know it makes me a bad Chicagoan. But that show is every bit as good as everybody has said. I am thoroughly enjoying it. So I look forward to finishing that up with her later this week. And then season is it- three is like, yeah, later this year. Yeah, yeah, they, they started filming just a week ago, That's season right. three. It's really, it's fun, I think, for people in our universe because the soundtrack is so heavily what the industry term is modern rock. So it's a lot of REM and the replacements and some Wilco stuff and obviously some pumpkin stuff. And it's very fun for me to watch her eyes glaze over as I explain to her the importance of this replacement song (laughs) during the middle of the show. (laughs) That sounds fun. Uh, Like a love of musical history lesson. But kids, can't hardly wait. You don't understand. It's like the best song of 87. And she's just like, I'm just trying to watch the show. Just please leave me alone. She's like, I like it in tandem with the cooking <laughs> just shut up yeah. is it super chefy that's what i wanted to ask is it like really 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 i know that a lot of it's about a restaurant but is it truly like like an in-depth like cooking show i have never worked in a kitchen and i understand everything that's going on i don't think there's a level of entry required to watch the show i do think if you watch the show you'll find yourself using more of those terms in the kitchen and that is fun wow what do you do in the kitchen though you literally told me once that you don't know how to boil water not that i don't know how to i've just never practiced well you you put water (laughs) you turn the thing on it heats up it's glorious then water starts boiling now like if somebody's behind me i go like oh behind or like corner or cook that it's great interesting mr beef was a regular stop for me weekly when we when q101 used to be over in the merchandise mart over right by it Oh. How big were you? Because every time you talk about a restaurant, you talk about how you used to go there at least once a week. Uh, I'll find some old pictures. It'll be great. Oh, my God. Uh, highlights of the weekend. Carl checking in from Warrenville. Carl, ahoy. Howdy. Howdy. Oh, Carl, are you in a tornado or anything there? What's going on? Uh, no, nah, sorry. I'm I'm on the road. And it's you know, going past the truck. It's kind of loud in here. Sorry okay. about that. Well, what's the highlight of your weekend, bud? All right, so I, I got a die cutter recently, a uh, silhouette cameo four, and I've been fiddling around with that trying to get some, uh, some stickers made. And I went to Joanne's to find some vinyl because, like, for whatever reason, uh, places like Blick, they, they don't have the, the vinyl that you run through the things to make stickers, uh, yeah. but Joanne's does. And while I was there, I found a whole bunch of glow in the dark embroidery thread. Glow in the dark thread. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Because I, I, I also make patches, like hand embroidered patches for jackets and stuff. Yeah. And now I can make a whole bunch of glow in the dark patches. For my what do jacket. you put that uh, truck into like Tesla mode and you like sew <laughs> when you're on the road? <laughs> uh, no, I actually, I, 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 do the, I do the sewing by hand. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I, don't, I don't know if you got the joke. So, yeah, you stop the truck and then you thread, right? That's what you sew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So there's glow-in-the-dark thread at Joanne Fabric, if anybody wants any. Hey, Brian, can I ask you a question? Yes. About your past? Oh, boy. <laughs> no. Are, Are you, you go- sure everyone called you Sludge, or did they call you Pudge? <laughs> they called me Sludge. Are Cohen you sure? Me 
I, you know, honestly, honestly, when I ate like that, I was thinner than I am now. <laughs> well, that's the problem, obviously. <laughs> I'm just telling you that eating healthier does not work. That's a scam. <laughs> you know, calories in, calories out. That's BS. No, more calories in, less calories out. I don't know. Here's the key to success. Here's Gil. Here's Gil. This is not headline news. The San Francisco 49ers will play the Kansas City Chiefs in the Super Bowl in Las Vegas February 11th. Andy Reid says he's excited to find every all-you-can-eat buffet on the strip. The IRS launched its free tax filing pilot program today. It's a great service to use if you definitely want to end up owing money. Justin Timberlake and Jimmy Fallon brought the Barry Gibb talk show back to Saturday Night Live. It was either that or come up with something new and funny. And yesterday was Data Privacy Day, or as Google and the mother of all breaches called it, Sunday. This is not headline news. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101.